Hi everyone and welcome to this pick a card reading on the subject of your career in 2020 and again just tune in see which pile you feel drawn to and connect with your highest guidance over this and I wish you all a wonderful 2020. Okay bye. Okay so if you chose pile number one this is really exciting because you've got at the beginning of your year at the beginning of your spread brilliant idea and life review life review who doesn't want to see that at the beginning of a new year it's what we all do it's what we're all focusing on while well, most of us are preoccupied with um, looking at our lives looking at how far we've come and looking at the year before and dreaming up the year ahead um, so you are really going to be doing this in a very deep way, taking an inventory of everything and really deciding to change and heal anything that is unbalanced in your life, to address any issues outstanding from last year, times when you didn't step up, you know, in your opinion, times when you didn't take opportunities that you could have taken or really just evaluating the choices that you made because some of the opportunities that you didn't take it was for a good reason and you trusted your guidance you trusted your intuition and you will be rewarded for it some of the choices that you made last year actually were a great way of showing you exactly what's important to you and what is going to be continuing to be important to you in the year ahead in 2020. So you're going to be reviewing everything, you're going to be exploring your options, you're going to be keeping an open mind but you will also have a brilliant idea. You may already have a brilliant idea for how you're going to bring about the change, the desired changes. Your ideas are divinely guided and inspired at the moment so you must take action on them so as you come into the beginning of the year that's going to be your focus you're going to be looking at how to put your ideas into action how to take on board everything that you learned in 2018 2019 oh my god i've just missed a whole year well wow. so taking on board in fact for some people for some of us this is actually um a reflection, a period of reflection that has lasted two years, possibly even more, a period of preparation that's lasted maybe since 2016, you know, maybe the last few years have been a period of actually preparing you, getting you ready emotionally, energetically and mentally for the work that you really, really, really want to do. Maybe it's taken that long for you to get clear enough and feel deserving enough that you know at the beginning of 2020, yes, I can have it. Yes, I can do it. Yes, I'm going to go for it. So, and then you're going to be embracing a period of nostalgia. Maybe you've already had a taste of this career path before. Maybe you've already um, experienced what it's like to live that dream a little bit. Maybe you had a little bit of a, an experience of it over the past few years and certain circumstances, people or opportunities or a similar kind of energy is going to come back into your life. This possibly started at the end of 2019 um, and if you're still at the end of 2019, you might just be becoming aware that, yes, it's time to renew um, some of the commitments that you'd made a few years ago to the path that you knew was in your heart waiting to be burst fully. And it's possible that the seeds are being sown at this very time. If you're already in the middle of 2020, just know that there is a period of nostalgia. There is a period of revisiting certain things, certain experiences or possible projects and that that could be the secret to moving ahead in 2020. So don't throw everything away. Um, put some things down to experience, yes, and allow yourself to refine and redefine your vision, but just know that you already have a lot of the elements of what you need to be doing in place. There are some things that are still hidden. You have the moon. You also have some insecurities about what you're doing. I'm just going to put it out there the way it feels. And um, and some of this looking back on the past is going to be the possibility of an, a, um, a connection from the past that ne wasn't necessarily that great for you, that could throw you off balance or distract you in some way. So just be aware of that, okay? The moon, and I'm being reminded that the moon is in Pisces at the moment. Well, the moon 
sorry not that the moon is in Pisces the moon isn't going to be in Pisces all year but that the moon and Neptune are very closely linked and Neptune is in Pisces and um, these um, these are both very watery influences they rule water signs and they can um, allow us to become distracted or unclear have fuzzy thinking about what to do so just be aware of anything any influences from the past coming in and and making you lose clarity and focus because you're on a mission in 2020 to move ahead really clearly with purpose you might be traveling as well the chariot can sometimes mean travel but it can just mean travelling forward in life. It can be travelling in your imagination as well, where you use the law of attraction to actually make some of these things happen. But overall, it's you, triumphant, sitting, you know, in the driving seat, OK? Finally, in the driver's seat and fully, unapolog unapologetically and just completely moving ahead and knowing exactly which direction to go in how to do the steering how to ha you know you don't need a driverless car you you want to be in that seat because you know exactly how when and where you want to drive so this is going to be a year of real clarity and recommitment to a dream to something very important to you let's see how that's going to pan out so as you move into the year you've got the the wheel of fortune so there are opportunities coming in there may already be opportunities coming in um at, towards the end of the year end of 2019 there may be opportunities that are brought in by someone who's very grounded and practical you've got the king of pentacles here or that could be you feeling okay I can see how this material realm works now, I get it, I understand what I need to do, what I need to put in process to make this a reality. So in other words, not just having a dream and being idealistic about it, but also how does this work on the material plane? <laughs> you know, it's like you've just landed from another planet and had to spend several years, maybe decades figuring that out. And now in 2020, you'll be thinking, okay, I get that stuff now, I see what I need to to do to make it work you might still be feeling a little bit out in the cold regarding finances or regarding feeling in need of help wishing that there was some way that you could have more resources or just feeling shut out in some way from life or from from fairness or from having everything that you need to really invest in what you want to do but what this reading is saying what spirit is saying is that you can find innovative ways of doing things you can find ways of making this work with with what seem to be very few resources because ultimately this is a karmic balancing period. This is a period where you get to show the universe, show yourself that you mean business and then the abundance comes. So don't let the abundance be um, an obstacle to you going forward. You can go forward right now with very little. You can start a YouTube channel with a phone, for example. You know, there's a lot you can do now. There are a lot of resources available. So don't feel shut out and try not to let any worries that you have about finances um, limit you or hold you back because there is justice, there is balance, there is fairness coming in later on in the year. It feels as if it could be in the middle of the year. It could even be around the time of Libra, it could be later on in September. That doesn't mean you'll be struggling until then. I feel if you commit, you'll be full of excitement about what you're doing and things will just turn up at the time that you need them. There is a breakthrough coming. There is something big coming. If you commit yourself and you focus fully on what you're doing, there is something coming. You might have already seen little glimpses of support, but this is bigger. This is something that's going to be more meaningful. But you have to stay visible and stay active and keep keep committing to your goals in order to generate this or to, to manifest it, to, to let yourself be seen by people who will come forward to help you, to collaborate with you, to work with you or to give you the support that you need. So it's not about sitting back and thinking this support's coming in great, as soon as it comes in I'll get to work. It comes in because of what you do in the early part of the year, okay? Um, so you get your breakthrough and there's a period where you get to clear the air with loved ones around you as well. So later on in the year, it feels as if you get some sort of a breakthrough, possibly after years of struggle. In fact, it doesn't mean that your success comes later in the year. You could have a lot of success leading up to this 
In fact, this looks like a very successful period. All of this, you're going ahead, you're renewing old contacts, you're, you're really clear about your path, you've got opportunities with the Wheel of Fortune, you've got stability and planning on your side, strategizing, and any uh, ideas that you have about lack, they're only perceived lack. They're, it's what you're thinking, it's not the reality, but there is more fairness and balance coming and a bigger breakthrough later in the year, okay? Something bigger. And then you'll be able to clear the air with, with doubters and people who judged you and people who didn't think you were doing anything that made sense or that was worthwhile. You'll be able to clear the air, have a good conversation and um, you'll be able to clear the air with yourself as well. I feel that you've had this dark cloud hanging over you, some of you, for a long time and just been looking out into the distance thinking, you know, when is it going to go away? It could be a person, it could be a set of circumstances, it could be just self-doubt. And finally, later in the year, the storm breaks and, and there's rain and the cloud goes away and it's a blessing for everyone. OK, um, so and also a lot of static, a lot of electricity in your life as well. Some of you might have had issues with electricity, like you blow light bulbs or, you know, things just stop working around you. There could be a lot of extra psychic energy around you caused in part by your frustration about wanting to make things happen or feeling trapped or feeling stuck and all of that is going to clear later on in the year and you can stop feeling, feeling so frustrated and feel more focused which is wonderful and then you start to attract fellow travelers you start to attract even more support the right kind of support uh, people who can be on the journey with you rather than standing on the sidelines judging evaluating assessing even criticizing what you're doing um, people who are actually in it with you and I, I know that will make sense to some of you that, you know, you felt a little bit of an outcast at times, felt a little bit not only impoverished, but as if no one quite gets what you're trying to do. No one quite sees the vision in the same way. You're being asked to go slowly, to take your time. And when I say go slowly, that doesn't mean slow down your activities. It means go thoughtfully and mindfully through things because, you know, you've got fogged in as well fogged in and distant thunder so there really has been a lot of energetic disturbance and interference around you possibly someone or something trying to block you or stop you from moving ahead or your own inner doubts and insecurities have attracted that and so this is a time you know when you can't see clearly exactly what's ahead you go a little bit more carefully and mindfully so that you don't bump into any rocks in other words, use your inner vision, use your psychic sense, use your inner knowing to move through and navigate any choppy waters to do with um, breaking out, for example, of a self-imposed prison, breaking out of your own limitations, breaking out of a situation where you felt stuck and trapped and you have to be a little bit stealthy or careful it's a bit like you know if you're being oppressed in some way sometimes you do need to be a little bit secretive about what you're doing it's not great we don't like to behave like that but sometimes for your own protection and to protect your vision and your future you have to choose who you speak to and who you share things with and I feel that this is going to be definitely an element for some of you who've come to this group and that you need to just really um, open up and trust appropriately, okay? So don't shut out people who genuinely can be on your journey with you, but be aware, let history teach you when to speak and when not to speak in certain situations and when certain elements are involved, let's just say. Because this is the year of your breakthrough. Make no mistake about that. This is the year of your breakthrough. Do not let anyone or anything or any doubts rob you of your breakthrough. Because it's going to actually have a great... Um, towards the end, like towards the autumn, I feel as if you, you could have a much greater sense of community than you've had in a very long time. And where you already have a glimpse of that, I feel that could grow. It could grow stronger. So turn your face towards those that love and support you. 
and um, and grow yourself, grow your vision or your business or whatever it is your dream from from that sort of supported platform of feeling, ah, oh, there are people who get me, there are people who understand me, you know, this is okay, I can do this. And where you do have to be more careful and go slowly and, and navigate and tiptoe around people, it's not as if that's anything new for you. There are some people you've been tiptoeing around for years, but this time do it with intention, knowing that you have the great idea, you have the vision, you are ready to get in the driver's seat, and you're not gonna be tiptoeing around people so that you can hide out in the fog. You're doing it so that you can stealthily make a breakthrough that's gonna release you out into your amazing future. Okay, that's it. Happy 2020, group number one. Thank you for listening. Let me know what you thought of this, whether it resonated for you and um, what exciting things... Well, you don't have to share that. Maybe you want to keep that secret. But um, if you want to book a reading with me, all the links are in the description below. And um, otherwise, just have a great year and I'll speak to you soon. Bye. Wow, okay. So if you chose group number two... This is really interesting as well because you've got so many elements coming in here. This 2020 is going to be a, a year of rediscovering how to enjoy life. That's going to be really important. I know that sounds really simplistic and like, oh, I was expecting a bit more than that. <laughs> there is a bit more. Hang around. There's more detail. But it's going to be, um, you're going to be in a situation where you will be able to enjoy life a bit more because you've got the Ten of Pentacles here next to passion and pleasure. So it could be that a lack of, of resources has um, caused a lot of stress. And now in 2020, you're going to find a way to create more resources and that will give you the stability that you need to be able to relax a bit more, relax a bit more and enjoy life, savour your life. So let's start at the beginning here. So we come into the year with you feeling a certain amount of sensitivity. Let's just face it. There is a lot of sensitivity around you. Some of it will be because of the way that um, you viewed things when you were ending the year. Maybe you didn't quite think that you'd accomplished as much as you would have liked to. Or maybe you're just becoming more sensitive. For some of you, it will have been a question of overwhelm because we've got prioritised right next to sensitivity. So that tells me that you need to focus on your priorities because you may have been um, feeling overwhelmed and this overwhelm has created more sensitivity. So you need to prioritise more and you need to break free of structures that cause you to feel overburdened and recreate the structure of your life in 2020, of your working life. So you need to be working less for more money. You need to stop, you know, you, you need to charge more or something. It's something like that. So, and when you're able to do this, you'll be able to reprioritize the tasks that you do um, in a way that brings more creativity and fun into your working life and more balance overall into your life. This is what you seem to be lacking. It seems as if some of you are snowed under paperwork is what I've just seen. And um, I know that won't apply to everyone, but some of you are just snowed under with tasks that seem in comparison, you know, compared to the things that you really want to be doing, these tasks seem to be so uh, minor, minuscule, so so um, everyday and three um, D. And there's a part of you just bursting with, with creativity and wanting to get out there and have more fun and celebrate. And I feel that that fun, that creativity, and that celebration is coming to you when you break free in the, at the beginning of the year. I feel you're going to spend time at the beginning of the year thinking this through. This feels like a group that writes their goals down and that thinks and that manifests and, and that plans each year ahead. And I would say in your planning, try to figure out how you're going to reprioritize the work that you do, the, the tasks, the individual day-to-day -day tasks that you do and the job that you do. Are you going to work longer hours on each day and take an extra day off so that you can be creative? You know, are you going to um, work at weekends so that you can have weekdays off free because you, then you'll be at home alone and you can you can make videos or whatever it is, make, make music or, or do art alone? You know, just re-organise uh, your 
work life, your home life, your schedule to suit you in a way that allows you to be more creative? Are you going to go part time? Are you going to find another job, a job that gives you a better hourly rate? Are you going to look for different contracts with different clients? Are you going to put in a boundary that says, I will only work with clients who can um, pay me this because that will give me the freedom to to stop being so exhausted and stop being because no one else sees it when you're over over stressed over worked you know any of that they just see the product they just see what you produce and if that situation is meaning is causing you to be blocked creatively or to st stop having fun that is what needs to change as early as possible in the year, the early part of the year, because later on in the year, if you do that and you break free of your current constraints, I feel that there are some fun experiences waiting for you. And that might sound strange because we're talking about career and you might be thinking, well, why, why do I want to have fun? It's time for you to do something that's more fun or it's time for you to remember the parts of your career that are more fun. It might be that those have just become deprioritized and you need to switch things around again. Get help with the mundane tasks so that you have more time to do the bit that you're really good at or the bit that you love. Because I feel when you address the creativity and start to have more fun, things are going to start taking off for you. You've got the Ace of Wands, Three of Cups and then the Eight of Wands, which is news, communications, things coming in, possibly new opportunities, as a result of you being creative again. So it's possible that you, you're not having as much creative output at the moment as you were in the past. Do you need to start blogging again? Do you need to start making videos? Do you need to start writing, painting, going out to auditions, uh, singing, dancing, whatever it is, you, you know, cooking more. Maybe some of you, you need to cook more, cook for yourself more, rather than eating um, instant food or takeaways so that you can feel more vibrant and raise your energy, raise your vibrations so, and, and do that by, raise your vibration by eating better a better quality of food and by having some fun and then you'll start to manifest the news and the new opportunities and the energy will start to move again. So whatever, however that manifests, Manifest for you, there is some way that you need to reprioritize creativity to bring in new opportunities. Yes, it may be that you need to showcase your work or your art more, your artistic endeavors more, so that you get more of those opportunities. You might have been seeing yourself as someone who works in an office or someone who just does what you have to do to, to keep food on the table. But you're being asked to see yourself as an artist, as a creative person, as an, an, a person with entrepreneurial spirit, maybe. And um, to create the time and space to make that happen, because what you focus on, you'll have more of. And that will play out in a very practical way as well. Because when people see that that's what you're doing, they'll think, ah, oh, that's the person I go to to get more of this, rather than the person I go to to... Um, to you know, get some copywriting done or get my files organised or, you know, someone I get to um, be on reception, whatever it is, you know, be really clear about what you want and prioritise that. It's going to bring strength into your life. It's going to bring, bring strength back to you. So it's really interesting how the people we have around us, the food we eat, whether or not we exercise, even whether we drink enough water, we know that all of those things have an effect on our ability to feel strong or not, or energised or not. But it also you know, applies to the work you do, the kind of tasks you do. Certain kinds of work can be very draining. Straying too far from your path can be very draining. And getting back on your path, being creative, allowing that to re-energize you that can be extremely strengthening and when you turn your your self your your vision and your focus back towards that it will strengthen you and you'll have enough energy to do everything you might be thinking at the moment how am i going to find the energy to do that as well as everything that i have to do well it's a self-generating mechanism. Remember that you feel tired now because of the work that you're doing. When you start doing what you love, it will re-energize you and you will have strength and energy that you never thought you could have. You'll be waking up in the middle of the night full of passion, full of ideas, full of things that you need to do to, to innovate this or to 
offer that or to try this or try that. Remember what that's like. You can have that again, but you have to start doing what you love in order to get that energy back again and to re um, steer your life back onto the right path. Okay. Um, judgment. It's all about you um, looking at everything in your life and calling it up so that you can have a look at it, so that you can assess and evaluate it and ask, you know, is this what I really want? Am I really getting what I want out of life? Am I really on the right path? Is this really working for me anymore, this job? Can I get away with it anymore in terms of myself and my health? Because when it comes down to it, we're only robbing ourselves, aren't we? You know, is your higher self going to let you get away with it? A cheating it anymore you've got the five of swords here and it's like you've got a sort of victory but it's kind of a hollow victory and along the way you know you're very hurt other people are hurt because you're not happy you know everyone can feel that you're not entirely happy it's like a small victory you know battle no one really wins in battle do they and sometimes we think okay I've I've won because I've achieved this I've achieved something but when it comes down to it, ultimately, we're defeated if we de we're defeating the object of our purpose. I know that sounds really intense, but what I feel about that card being stuck there is that it's an opportunity, it's a wake-up call for you. It's an opportunity for you to see what's really happening because on the other side of it, you've got the Ten of Pentacles. So when you do awaken to this, this idea that you're only cheating yourself, um, you will actually be able to manifest greater abundance actually doing something that you love than you are now. It's as if you're just sort of scratching together these tiny little victories and each one of them is another little um, thing that, that reassures you or convinces you to stick with what you're doing. But ultimately, in the overall scheme of things, no one's benefiting, no one's really winning. And, you know, it's not a question of just ditching all of that and moving into something else. It's a question of allowing the creativity back into your life and allowing it to guide you and show you a way through and a way to make the change um, in a way that's sensible and practical and useful to you. Um, okay, so passion and pleasure. You've got savour your life. And it's going to become much easier to savour your life when you're living a life that you enjoy, isn't it? Um, but you're also going to be given opportunities to to just enjoy things a bit more later on in the year as a result of turning back towards your passions. You're going to enjoy what you're doing more rather than thinking of just getting by from day to day. And then it brings success. It's incredible that it actually brings success. What you love doing actually brings you success later on in the year. Success expands in your life. Remember, the more you focus on something, the more it expands, the more it grows. If you focus on success and you focus on your creativity, the more likely you are to move towards taking actions that bring more success and creativity into your life. Okay? So turn away from small thinking and move towards creativity and joy and, and it will bring peace. Discovering truth. You stand in the light of truth. Enjoy the journey. I just had to read those together because it just sounded as if they, <laughs> they went together. You stand in the light of truth. Enjoy the journey. So it's another way of saying savour your life. You won't even notice the time flying by. You know how when you do a job that you don't enjoy, you're kind of watching the clock every minute and every minute is an agony. And, you know, the hours go so slowly. This is going to be the opposite. It's going to be something that you don't even, you know, when you're you're doing this, this creative thing, whatever it is, this, it could be a spiritual path, it could be a new venture, it could be travel, it could be anything, it could be just something new bursting onto the scene in your life. When you're doing this thing, you won't even notice the time going by, because that is your truth. That's who you really are. So enjoy it. And you will enjoy life much more when you do this thing. And when you do go back to the day-to-day -day grind, the, the, you know, nine to five sort of reality the job that you currently do or whatever it is that you're breaking away from even that will feel easier because you'll bring that new light into it you'll bring the joy you'll have had some relief 
from from it you know you need some people who come to this group you need a lot of um, variety and interest to keep you happy because these cards are all very there's a lot of movement here joy celebration and um, passion pleasure <laughs> you know all of this it's like you need you need a good burst of fun and enjoyment and you need for things to be varied and interesting when you are bogged down and mired in things that are too mundane you will get depleted so you know it affects you even more than it would anyone else because of your sensitivity you can be acutely sensitive to humdrum uh, routine dullness completely you know really really affected by it but equally on the positive side you can be lit up by creativity and spirituality and joy and, and self-expression and it's that ability to be lit up that actually affects others and that will ultimately bring you that abundance. Okay, that's it. I hope you enjoyed that group too. Happy 2020. It's going to be amazing if you really do commit to yourself, to your truth. Okay, take care. Let me know how that resonated for you and have a great year. It's going to be amazing. Bye. Group three. This group, I feel as if you are looking to move away from a very difficult situation. This is going to be the year that you, you could possibly just go for it. Just do it and find sanctuary. Um, but you see, the thing is, sanctuary here in this card is your spiritual source. Sometimes when we go through really difficult times, it forces us to lean on our inner resources, whether you call that, you know, or and our spirituality and spiritual practices, whether you call that God, your guides, meditation, uh, chanting and Buddhist practice, whether it's your higher self, your inner knowing, your inner strength and resilience, whatever it is, sometimes we go through difficult times that will teach us how to find those strengths within us or teach us how to become acutely aware of those supportive spiritual aspects. And that in itself is a wonderful thing to have, isn't it? For this group, I want you to just take a second to really take that in. That in itself is a wonderful gift that you now know how to connect. You now know how to find that strength. You know how to soothe yourself, heal yourself, bring yourself back into balance and ground all of that on the 3D. You now know how to talk to your guides and angels or how to manifest what you want. You now know how to make yourself feel better. You know how to meditate. You know how to visualize. You've learned a lot. You've come a long way as, as a result of everything you've been through. And if you're listening to this and thinking, no, I haven't. No, I haven't. This is the gift of 2020 for you. That's the real gift of 2020 because it's at the end, but it's not necessarily, um, it does, uh, you know, there's no time. I try not to le read these in too much of a linear way all the time, especially when things like this suggest themselves because this is a journey. This isn't something that suddenly, oh, you wake up and realize that's happened. It's a process. It's something that will be happening throughout the year. It's something that probably started decades ago already. It's been a journey and it, but it, there's something about 2020 that really puts you firmly in the knowledge of that and makes you really able to appreciate it for what it is and for what it means. So that's wonderful. Now, there are other things happening. Some of them look really exciting and some of them look really fun. You're being asked to remember who you are. So if we look at this in terms of linear time, at the beginning of the year, you are going to be asking questions, as we all are, about what you did in the previous year, about what you want to do in the year that's coming, about who you really are and where you want to be going. For some of you, you will be thinking about a career that involves working with children and that's taking that card absolutely literally, indigo and crystal children. And the reason I'm taking it so literally for some of you is because you've got playtime next to it. So for some of you, you will be playing a role where you are able to guide children. You are able to teach and nurture them in a way that's very empowering, respectful, honouring and and spiritual as well. So it could be that you are involved in a new kind of education, you know, um, some, some sort of enlightened school 
or um, or it could be that you have children around you, nephews and nieces and other relatives. This could be your own children that you're going to be guiding and nurturing in a very particular way in 2020 that's going to be meaningful or it could be that you're just going to be having more fun you're just going to let yourself have fun and your inner child is going to come out and play and where you've actually felt um, that things have been a bit too much for you in the past you're actually just going to start to honor your inner child and respect what you really really need which is to Give yourself time to play, remember the importance of play and slowly start to move away from situations that are, have been difficult. You might, some of you might actually be travelling in order to move away from this situation. You might be thinking of going to another country or another town or neighbourhood even. You might just be moving house. But whatever you're moving towards, it feels as if it brings more peace. It brings more balance and harmony and an opportunity to enjoy life more because you've got the temperance and it feels as if your 2020 begins with that as your focus, with finding a life and a career of meaning, but also being in the right place geographically or environmentally to be able to do that, to feel free to do that. So it could be that you've been in a, a connection or an environment that's made you feel a bit blocked and a bit prevented from doing that. And you could have had certain anxieties, you know, swords are always to do with thinking and overthinking and anxiety and you know feeling tortured and all of these things and you know I'm not um, putting that down at all because when we go through tough times gosh it feels tough and there's you know and no one else goes through it with you you're the only one who knows where you've been and what you've been through and um, quite often when I see this card I know that someone's really been through it and they're moving away from all of that they're moving away from all of that which is wonderful because what you're moving into in 20 to in 2020 is just being able to believe in life again, believe in good things and good times again and also a real sense of triumph comes with this, a real sense of victory, a sense of having overcome all of those dark times and all of those difficulties and some kind of help, some kind of unexpected win that comes quite early on in the year that allows you to just shift course and just say right okay that's it yeah I'm definitely I'm out of there I'm away all of that's behind me now I'm moving away from that it's it's time it's time to draw a line under that and you've got the Queen of Cups as well which means that you will be able to get back in touch with your feelings again that's what I feel in this spread anyway sometimes it represents another person and there will be different meanings for different people, so we'll look at that as well. But it can mean that you've actually had to shut your feelings off to some extent in recent years. And you've been afraid to open up because you've had to be in protect mode. When I look at the Six of Swords, you know, she's always, she seems to be always hooded and sort of in disguise and sort of stealing away in the night, just slipping away, you know, under cover and protection and and just, you know, having to make her way through a difficult situation, away from the difficulties, pretty much, you know, just trusting, trusting that things are going to be okay by the light of the moon, just just doing what, what she knows she needs to do. And so that it feels as if there could have been a period of actually really having to protect yourself and just feeling really, wow, scared about the future and not sure what was coming next. But you... You went for it or you will be going for it in 2020 and it will bring rewards. Even if those rewards are gradual in coming, they will come because you will be walking towards the truth of yourself and your life and who you are and that will have an effect on everything that you do, including your career as that uh, follows, as you rebuild yourself. For some of you, you'll be rebuilding yourself somehow, rebuilding your life, rebuilding and correcting past mistakes and, you know, letting go of the past. Um, so give yourself time and space with that. If these are people, you have someone very emotional and, uh, and someone very practical, you could have a water sign, Cancer, Pisces or Scorpio, or you could have an earth sign, Taurus, Gemini or um, Capricorn around you in your life, possibly wanting to work with you or offer some sort of support or guidance, or you could be one of these. If this is, um, 
you know, if these are a couple of other people, they could be male or female, um, it seems to be held up a little bit. So there could be something that involves working and collaborating with other people, but you're having to wait for that to actually materialise. And just give yourself time, just trust divine timing, because everything happens for a reason. And if it's held up, it's for a good reason. It's possible that the reason is that you need to be in a leadership role and see yourself that way and see yourself as someone who can have your own project and generate your own opportunities. You don't need anyone else and you certainly don't need to be waiting around. So while you wait or not wait for things to materialise, focus on other things that you can create. You've got the lover's card right in the middle of this as well. So it looks as if there could be a choice. As this is a career reading, let's read this as a choice between two things. But I can't help thinking the lover's card in the Gilded Tarot is so, so passionate and so love kind of focused that it's hard not to read it in that way. So it is possible that there is, you're waiting to work with two people and um, and it's very sort of neutral and in in a way sort of lukewarm and while you're waiting it's possible that you'll meet someone who is actually um, a divine partner, a divine counterpart, you know, a real partnership, a major partner in your life um, and that could possibly be in in other ways as well. It might be a good idea to, to keep those things separate for the time being, especially considering what you've seem to have been through and that you seem to be moving away from a difficult situation that could have been emotional. But take your time and think thing, think things through. And remember that you don't need anyone else to, to generate opportunities for you. You can do that for yourself. And if you keep that attitude in mind, it's possible that you can meet someone who will come as an equal. And, you know, you'll both provide a perfect balance in a really great partnership, both bringing whole and complete elements for something new, for a new kind of venture. So... Let's just leave that as it is and see what materialises. Your main focus over 2020 is going to be restoring peace and balance in your life and in your career and moving forward in the way that you want to move forward now. It's almost as if that's been subverted in the past or, you know, things have been bleak or, you know, things just have you've had one thing after another coming at you and you're moving away from all of that and you're gaining clarity and some kind of a victory and you need to capitalize on that by staying the course with what you know to be true for you and try not to be distracted or held up again okay and that will happen if you take the the reins and move forward okay walk in beauty you are a beacon for others walk in beauty so stay aware of the beauty of life, the wondrous universe, this card says, and, and your ability to create magic as well. It's not all about having goals and, and fulfilling them. It's about things that can happen in magical, mysterious ways that we don't understand until we start out on a particular path. For example, you might have decided that A plus B will take you to C, but A plus B might take you to the end of the, the alphabet, to the end of your rainbow where your pot of gold is waiting. So, in other words, you might have calculated that if you take this, this and this step, then by the time we get to April, I should have acquired this, this and this um resource that I need to do this, this and this and this. Therefore, this, this and this will happen. And by September, it might not work out like that. You might find that you have something so magical and beautiful that by the time you get to, OK, I'm going to do this, this and this in January and February, someone could come along and say, wow, that's amazing. I want to work with that person. That's exactly my vision. I think we can do amazing things together. The important thing is for you to get out there and be visible and to stay on top of your material circumstances and to rebuild your life independently and see what comes along and stay visible. I think I just said that, but I felt I had to say it again. Embracing enthusiasm. enthusiasm. Shout to the heavens with happiness. Amazing happiness coming later on in the year and 
finding sanctuary and again these two could be happening throughout the year it's not necessarily that this is November and December this is just a theme something that you're working towards something that you're building finding your enthusiasm for life again you know recapturing that sense that life can be beautiful and that love can be timeless and and transcendent and supportive and and equal and wonderful it's just the, the potential here in this spread is just amazing it seems very balanced in you know in lots of ways in lots of ways it seems very balanced and it seems to be bringing an awful lot in i mean you haven't got any um any wands cards but you've got the lovers which is all about passion and you've got you've got swords there you know you've got you, you know what you need to be mindful of you know that you can have a victory of clear thinking and cut through all the nonsense of the past you do have the temperance that's that's talking about pleasure and enjoyment and peace and balance and harmony and all of those things and um, and being able to take things easy a bit you've got cups you've got pentacles so and so many messages here telling you to trust your vision to trust your vision and move forward and if you are looking for a career that is going to be more playful and that's going to help you to release the the burdens of any kind of restrictions that you may have experienced in the past then you have to honour your heart and move forward. It could be that this time at the beginning of the year is really just about you becoming more playful again. And if that is the case, I feel that that playful kind of energy is going to go through with you to the end of the year. And that's wonderful because that's the great place to manifest from. Okay, that's, uh, that's it, number three. I hope you enjoyed that. Let me know. Let me know how that resonated with you I love to hear your messages or just say hi or just say you know whether you enjoyed the reading you don't have to be too specific and um, all the links are below if you'd like to work with me or book a reading and have a fantastic 2020 and I'll speak to you soon bye